I'm here today as a teacher of reading. I'm here to talk about possibilities. The possibility, as a reading teacher, I feel the possibility of teach, possibilities are expanded when you teach children how to read. You know, it really is quite an amazing process when you think about it. We take arbitrary symbols, we attach a letter to that arbitrary symbol, then we take those arbitrary symbols and we push them together to make a word. We take one word, add another word, add another word until we have a sentence. That sentence turns into a paragraph. That paragraph turns into paragraphs and that turns into stories, stories that change children's lives. Today I don't want to just talk to you about learning how to read. I want to talk to you about some things I've learned about learning. I'm going to begin with the story of when my mother got a cell phone and she was in her early 70s. You see, every Saturday my family went out for breakfast together. And it just happens on this Saturday that my son Michael was sitting right next to my mom across from me in the booth and he pulled out his cell phone. And my mom was like, show me how to use that. And he, she pulled out her cell phone, which I'm, I don't even think she knew how to turn on, truthfully. And it, I watched this most beautiful thing happen. My son Michael gently reached over, took her cell phone, and said, this is how you can put a number in. I'm gonna put my number in. And he shows her how to put her, his number in. And then he hands her the cell phone and says, put mom's number in. I'll help you. And so he's helping her. And then, then, he, he, then what he did is he said, why don't you put your friend Darlene's phone number in? And so she took the phone and she did it by herself. And I thought, as I just sat there and watched, this is the most amazing example of good teaching and learning. You see, he showed my mom what to do first. Then he stepped in and he did it with her. And then he showed her how to do it by, or let her do it by herself. You see, today I'm not here just to talk to you about about learning to read, I want to talk to you about powerful learning. I want to talk to you about some things that are happening at my school that are amazing. I want to talk to you about a fourth grade classroom, classrooms that I work in, and how we have taught children how to become amazing discussers of literature. literature. You see, we took that very same theory that my son used to teach my mom how to use a cell phone to teach them how to talk about books. Do you know how we started? We started by gathering four teachers together. And we all sat at a table, and the kids formed a fishbowl around us and looked, looked and observed as we had a literature discussion for them. I just think how many times we expect children just to be able to do something and we don't show them what to do. So then we took it to the next step. On the next day, well really what we were thinking, we were thinking like, well yeah, kids watch you. They watch you have a good discussion, but you're an adult, right? You should be able to have a good discussion. So we wanted our kids to see fourth graders having a great book discussion. So what we did is we had our kids watch a video of fourth graders. And it was amazing. The lights started to go on. You could just see the spark on their eyes. There was something about them watching other fourth graders have a great discussion. You can just tell. They started to say, I know I can do this. But we didn't stop there. Well, actually, I want to um, make a side note. 
we really try to emphasize critical thinking. And so what we did, when the kids would watch us, right afterwards, we would have a discussion. We talked about what went well, and we talked about what could be improved. And they weren't afraid to talk about us as teachers and what we needed to improve, believe me. And then we did the same, so they started to gather some evidence of what a good literature discussion would look like. Then we did the same thing when we watched those fourth graders. So we started adding to our list of what a good literature discussion looks like. <laughs> And as we added to that list, that was really the place where they're thinking critically and starting to form ideas of how they want their literature circles to be. So we showed them how. The next step was for us as a whole group to come together and have a literature circle together. So the whole, we took a very simple book and we started having lit, a literature circle together. We, something we found out, though, right away, is that our kids didn't know how to listen. What they all wanted to be jumping in at once and giving their idea. They weren't listening to the other child's idea first. And so what we did is we started to teach them what, what good listening and speaking looks like. We started to teach them how to make a chain of connections of thoughts. We actually took uh, the whiteboard and started to draw a chain where one person would speak and the next person would add on and we'd draw another link in the chain, then the next person would speak and we'd draw another link in the chain until a new idea was started. Believe me, they were excited and their heads started to explode. And do you know why they exploded? They exploded because someone was listening to them. You see, we all want to be significant. We all want to belong. We all want to be listened to. And when someone takes your idea and adds on to it, you feel significant. And I am telling you, they started to just go crazy. So we did this for a little while. We kept practicing. And what we did is we started, collect, we kept collecting ideas for what we needed to do next. And when we got, the interesting thing that happened is all of a sudden, the kids were chomping at the bit to go into their own small groups. See, we followed the children. We kept having a whole group discussion until they let us know that they were ready to be in a small group talking about books. So they started to have their own little discussions. But the, and the neat thing was that we, as teachers, step out of it. But we're still there to support them as we go from group to group. And the cool thing is they they created their own norms, their own rules, and it belonged to them. They owned it, and that creates passion. Also, you'll notice we've also had collaborative thinking and metacognitive thinking because every single day they stopped, they assessed themselves as readers, and thought about what they could do better the next day. So kind of an amazing thing started to happen. They, they were having these great literature circles, and we really got to step back and watch them have this amazing conversation. So we, and they started to do it all by themselves. The next thing that happened is once they were able to start going through the process of learning how to think and talk, they were able, we were able to start talking about the characters. We were able to start thinking much more deeply about what was happening in the stories. See, we started looking at how 
characters act, what characters look like, what characters do, and what does that tell us about that character as a person? See, this started to be a place where passion was ignited. Those characters started to become friends with our, our students. Do you know how I know they were? Because when they would go out and play on the playground, they would be playing Island of the Blue Dolphin, and they'd be all taking those characters, they would take the roles of those different characters, and they would, you know, you know it, it's affected you when you want to play the game, when you want to play a book, right? Fourth grade, fourth grade. So, and, the, the great thing that also happened as we started to connect to characters, as we started talking about the characters' choices, would we make different choices than the characters? And then we started to connect it to ourselves. You see, here's where the big possibility happens when every day you say to the children, what did you learn today that will make you a better person from this character? And I am telling you, that's when we go to a very high level of thinking. We start to talk about things like, is it okay to steal? When you're reading Fantastic Mr. Fox, and Fantastic Mr. Fox is trapped in a burrow, and his family is starving, is it okay for him to steal? Of course, that's a moral issue, so we're not going to tell them, yes, it's right, or no, it's, it's not right. And then we start doing things like sending them home and saying, we talk to your parents, do you, ask your parents, do you ever think it's right to steal? And they start recording what their parents are saying. And we start making connections to home. And it's, it's just amazing the thinkers that start to develop. And they start to think critically, and it's amazing. It's, an ama it, it's one of the biggest possibilities, because what we're doing is going through a process where we're teaching our kids how to think. You see, we, a lot of times in teaching, especially right now in our very standards-driven um, movements, we kind of get hung up on teaching this, and teaching this, and teaching this, and teaching this. But when you teach the process, all the this and this and this just starts to happen. Now I want to tell you a little bit about how confident the kids were. The kids were so confident and so independent in their literature circle that we actually invited the parents in. And the, they told their parents about everything that they could do in a literature circle. And I'm going to tell you, the thinking was high level. In fact, we went around at the end, and the parents told about what they thought about that literature circle where they, took, where they did it on their own. And the parents said, I didn't think like that till I was in high school. I didn't think like that till I was in college. See, if you give kids the opportunity to think, they are up. Amazing, they are amazing. And here's the real possibility, the biggest possibility of all. Think about what kind of kids we want to go out into the world. Think about these kids that have gone through this whole process of learning to think and think critically and problem solve those are the kids that we want to go out in the world. Those are the leaders of tomorrow. And I hope you agree. Thank you.